Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop. We are working on the heavy rocker. Look at Tom. He's already on it. What are you working on? I am building mounts for the seats, the brackets, reinforcements in the floor, so they don't rip out when we crash at King of the Hammers. When we crash? <laughs> yeah, that was too dark. Um, he's putting seat belts in so that we can pass tech at King of the Hammers. Oh, that's even way better. All right, what are we working on? We're going to be working on pedals on the other side. Lizzie, I've got this pattern. I think this is what we want. Ooh. So this is going to need to be cut all the way out. So, I'm going to put you on that. That's what we're going to be hanging it off of. But we're going to need more strength on it. All right. Um, I need to get the master cylinder off so I can get the brake booster because we're going to have to modify the rod that goes into that to our homemade pedal. We're gonna be doing what we did on the Morbear. Come out here, I'll show you. So right here, you can see, we've got two three quarter inch heim joints, the rod down. So we're looking at about four inches of difference from the plate to where it goes through. So that's what we'll do on this one. We'll do four inches, it seemed to work. Morbear's got good brakes. You know how to make the shop warm? go out there for a minute. <laughs> we need this up about four inches from the center line of the master cylinder. That's gonna do it right there. So we're gonna figure out what we need here. Because this is not correct. I was holding the camera. <laughs> so for some reason, maybe somebody can let us know. We have these heat pumps. Whenever the wind's blowing, they just give up. They just stop. So they'll, they'll work just fine until the temperature gets down and then they just stop and they start blowing cold air if they kick on at all. So the thermostat set at 70, it's 56 degrees. The wind's blowing, so it's freezing in here. The second the wind stops, they'll start blowing hot air. So if you can tell me why they would do that. They're not the only ones. We had a gas furnace in here that did exactly the same thing. If it dropped down, like if it was like 10 degrees less than the thermostat was set at, then it would just give up and turn off. Anybody in the heating and air conditioning that can tell us what in the world is going on, we would appreciate it. All right, back to the problem at hand. There's the problem at hand. All right, this is how this is gonna go. Once it's the right length, we might put some JB Weld in here and press it in so that it's not loose, but it'll work. Okay. Tom, I need you to stop everything you're doing. All right, we've got the Off-Road Record Games coming up March 9th, 10th, and 11th. And one thing that I want to talk to you about today is the athletes that are going to be participating in this. And these athletes are high level. The amount of physical and mental preparation it takes to compete and participate in an event this prestigious is off the hook. So let me show you some of the things that I've been doing to prepare myself physically for this event. Okay, Liz, you need a spotter. All right, that's one of the ways that I prepare. Let's go check on Merlin and see what he's doing. Record games. Three tomato. Three tomato. Four tomato. Keep going. You keep going. Let's check in on Paul. See what his regiment looks like. Hey Paul, what you doing? He's training for the record games. Wonder what Eric's doing. What? You're supposed to be trying for the games. Five more. Oh. Oh. Fifty more squats. Oh. Climb that rope. Oh. Stop it, Dio. All right, let's see if Rory can beat that. Get ready for the record games in March. Come out and check us out, March 9th, 10th, and 11th. 
So that's probably how we get ready for the off-road record games. Can't wait to see you there March 9th, 10th, and 11th. Here's a nice plate of 3 16ths. All my, just tell the size of metal you're looking at. Because that's how thick it is. If it's, yeah, if, I know, but if it's 3 16ths thick, it looks 3 16ths thick. This is what we want. This is some 8th inch. And this will do what we need. All right. We'll just set this on the ground. I'm going to make a part out of cardboard. Tom, are you done with this? No, I, it's just barely getting going again. All right. Everything's fine, Tom. Tom's always in the way. I heard that. All right, so what I'm doing here is this is where the master cylinder bolts on, the booster, whatever. That whole assembly bolts on here, and it needs to be pretty strong. We've got some good structure on this side, but it's just one layer of sheet metal there. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a plate out of some eighth inch. For those of you that use the metric system, it's about that many millimeters. Three, three millimeters. We sure did. We got them drill bitted out. <laughs> now we're gonna hole saws. We're gonna do something with this middle one. All right, we're gonna see if there's an improvement. All right, there was an improvement, but we're still not good at it. So we're gonna show you what Tom's been working on while I go clean this up. So right back here, I'm welding these onto the seats. I don't know if that's kosher, but that's how we're doing it. I'm just uh, welding these little brackets down here so I can put seat belt brackets right here on the side. I'll do the other side the exact same way. And then we got our chest mount harnesses that we put on the other day, and these will be the side straps. So we'll have four point harnesses when we're all done. We're gonna be locked tighted in there. Oh yeah, tighter than any vehicle we've ever had. I'm gonna drill some plug holes. So this is gonna go on there. Everywhere it's touching on the outside, we'll weld it. And then on the inside, we'll fill up some of these plug holes so that it's just all rigid and stays Parallel with the cab and all the way. I'm over here trying to get the flappy wheel, but Matt's still using it. I am, but not for long. So the plan is to make that make that one. Did you guys hear that? Matt said the plan is to do something. I knew he was a planner. I always have a plan. You told me once you never have a plan. But I do love when a plan comes together. I'm gonna put these through. You're gonna put those on. And then you're gonna gently tighten them up. How's it look? That looks really good. Okay. Is that disturbing you over there? No, I was just excited at all the work that's happening right now. Okay, Liz is gonna come out here and do the next phase. Okay, we're gonna be doing some stitching around here. I was able to get that other side a lot better than I thought I was gonna be able to. That looks good. It's past quitting time, so we're gonna make Lizzie go home and we're gonna see you back here tomorrow. Like what? Like. This. All right, told you it'd be that fast. Actually, Lizzie told him. Oh, she told him. Yeah, she's not here yet because we came in early because... Yeah, Matt said we weren't going to have any time to work on the record today, which was really depressing, so we came in early to work on the record. Yeah, what are we working on? I have a seat left to get in. This one I think is ready to go. That one I need to put in, see where to drill holes. All right. 
I'm just marking the holes. Then I'll get it back out and you can do whatever you do. Whatever it is you do. <laughs> This is the plate that the pedal swings off of, so we started reinforcing it. And when Lizzie gets here, we'll have her weld this all up. All right, the reinforcements on the floor are all welded up. I'll show you those, and then we're gonna move on to the seats. Reinforcement, reinforcement. But Tom, is that all the reinforcement the seats are gonna get? I'm glad you asked. No, there's gonna be a bigger plate underneath that'll reinforce it even more. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I'm a little worried about these over here. This is what's bothering me. The cab's gonna be super strong, but we're mounting the seat bolt, seat bolt, seat belts. And seat bolts to <laughs> this. All to this little frame here. So that frame looks really small to me and that's what's gonna hold us in the cab. So these little things right here, don't look super solid. That's eighth inch. <laughs> For those of you that use the metric system, it's that many millimeters. I'm thinking we need to reinforce these with like little gussets or something. What do you think? I don't think you do. I knew that was coming. Matt's not huge on safety. It's not a, it's not a question <laughs> I, of safety. I'm just thinking the forces it would take to rip this tab off. You'd have to no. rip two of them. Yeah, there would be big forces, but that's what happens when you're in an accident. In an There's accident. big forces. I know for, for short moments, you weigh like 20 tons when you stop. Okay, will these hold 20 to put tons? put it in perspective, a gnat, and if a semi hits a gnat doing 60 miles an hour, for a moment, they are exer exerting exactly the same amount of force on each other. Physics. I don't think it's a moment. I think they always exert the same amount of force on each other. Well, I mean, you could be right. Who knows? Right. No one knows. Equal, equal and opposite. I think Newton know. Anyway, yeah. we're going to reinforce these seats when, when Matt's not looking. <laughs> Okay, that should be ready to go in. Lizzie's late to work because she got stuck. <laughs> she had to do a recovery. Yeah. I, I had to do a recovery on my own car. She needs a four wheel drive Ranger with some good tires. Yeah. What are you driving right now? It's just my Ford Fusion that I got, which is nice for on road and long drives and stuff, but is useless in the snow. I did use a yellow Matt's recovery rope though. Did you take a picture? No. Oh. All right, so I just sent Scott a text message about some more fittings that we need. Because this is the right end and this is the right end. So if you mix these together, here's all the things that won't work. We just got to find the one thing that will. Nope, still wrong. We're just figuring out ways to stiffen this plate up so that it can easily handle the forces that we're gonna be exerting on it. And I'm doing that by a guesstimation. Matt, have you ever had the screaming barbies? No. Have your hands ever got so cold that when they warm up, they feel like needles are jabbing into them and they're just super painful? When I was it's a, almost like a cat when, yeah. when I was a <laughs> child, but then I grew man hands. <laughs> Lizzie was complaining that her hands were just stinging this morning, and I told her that's the yeah. screaming barfies, but Matt it, has no it idea. It feels like you're, I'm rubbing my hand on a cow tongue. That's what it feels like. I have no idea what a cow tongue feels like. I oh. will show you. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll, I'll give you an example. A cow, if it got good contact on your bare beardless face, could lift you off the ground with its tongue. <laughs> you got some serious grip, huh? Yes. Yeah. Screaming barfies feels like a cow tongue. Get these guys in. This thing looks like it's gonna fit me the best out of everybody. Maybe I'll just have to drive it more. Oh, yeah, this will be your rig. Matt can drive the banana. 
You do have a nice view from up here, though. You can see pretty good. Here comes Tom with the other seat. And then you'll put these bolts in <clears throat> that way. That's not bad. Coming through. <laughs> these are the harnesses that we got from PRP. We're gonna try and bolt these in. I don't think we've tried these yet with the seats installed, so this will be cool. This is like getting in Holly's mischief maker. <laughs> well, one side is very tight and one side is very loose. Buckle in, tighten down. I can't go anywhere. Whoa! Yeah, ain't going nowhere. Designed, engineered, fabricated, and tested. This has not been tested yet. It's in the it's in the process of being designed and engineered. I think I'm ready to have this welded up and then we can tack it in here. So am I doing like all of this or like? 80%. 80% of Or 75%. So for every, every 10 inches of length, you're gonna be welding seven and a half inches of it. How tall are you? Six one. Hefe six one. 228 pounds. Very close. I know, because me and Hefe are about the same size. So he fits in there. Check it out. How's the foot room if all those wires aren't in your way? It's good. You can stretch out. Oh, he's going all the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Hefe, it's a good thing you put that on, because I'm about to <laughs> shake things up. Right. There you go. This is going to be comfortable. You're sitting up, you're kind of at attention, but that's okay. When you're in this truck, you're going to want to be at attention. <laughs> yeah. This view's pretty good. Lizzie's got this super strong now, and when it cools off, we're going to tack it in place. Oh, so well, our perfect paint job down the tubes. No! That is all done. Looks good. All right, so we were talking about 1.21 gigawatts, and Lizzie has no idea what we're talking about. 1.21 gigawatts! So we recommended that she watch the Back to the Future trilogy because the last one's a Western, and Lizzie likes Westerns. Yeah. We're going to call her dad and see if he agrees that she needs to watch this. They're in a different time zone. He's gonna get this no, call an hour ago. Wow, that's fitting for Back to the Future. Yeah. Hey, Stu, is Back to the Future a good movie? Back to the Future, yeah, it's a good movie. All right, that's all I needed, thanks. So the reason we were talking about 1.21 gigawatts is we've got a Premier Power Welder on here. I need to look up the specs to see like how big of a welder it is, but we're guessing that it's at least 1.21 gigawatts. And I know it's pronounced gigawatts, but I'm quoting the movie. To generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. We're just guessing anyway. Are you gonna have a weld off during the record game? Oh yeah. Like? Yep, stick welding, yep. You better practice stick welding then. Uh, that's your event. <laughs> uh, I ain't the one doing it. All right, we're back. It is a new day, and we are gonna be working on the wrecker. Torex. Torex? Yeah, as a, a like, like, T, like a T-Rex. But the wreck should be W-R-E-C-K. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I don't know. That we're having a real struggle coming up with a name for this. I came up with the name Tow, T-O-W, the off-road wrecker, because Matt's just calling it off-road wrecker, and we mm -hmm. could call it Big Toe. Big Toe? Should we call it the T-Rex? T, T stands for toe. Toe. Toe Rex? Yeah. It's full I name like is it. Toe Rex. Toe Rex? Big Toe Rex. Yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. What are we working on today? So the things we marked to do today are brake lines, seat plates, fuel lines, cooling fitting adapter, doing the cab holes, plug air tank auxiliary, and the last thing on the list before King of the Hammers is check all the bolts. We gotta do all this first though. Yeah. All of this first. That's a lot. Everything that we're gonna be working on is gonna be under the cab. So we're gonna take the cab off for, let me do, for a lot of the time. 47th time. It's gotta be up there. <laughs> 
Oh wow, look at these plates right here. Yeah, they're burning through. So really your plates, I mean, I would just butt it to that. I wouldn't try to overlap it. We'll yeah. send Lizzie up in the cab and she'll drill down through. And then we'll put the nut on. And then we'll put the nut on and we'll tighten it up and then we'll tack it in well. place and then we'll go all the threads and we'll have to grind it off and put another one on and try again. Go three or four rounds of that and we'll have it all done. What do you think? Sure. We'll go weld these in, and we'll punch a hole through from the top, and we'll weld on the nuts. Turn the sink on. <laughs> Oh, the gas box on fire too. Right here. Get the... nah. <laughs> it's out. What's the damage up there? Yeah. There'll be some cleanup. Don't play with fire. Fire. Growling and growling and sniffing the air. On the fire before it starts to flame. Well, that's the difference between you and Smokey right there. Oh, speaking of that, I keep getting comments that it's not Smokey the Bear, it's Smokey bear so every song i've ever heard about smoky the bear literally says smoky the bear it's definitely smoky the bear but i'm gonna prove i'm gonna settle it once and for all smoky the bear song literally gene autry sang this smoky the bear now we're about to get sued for copyright infringement but yeah case closed smoky the bear all right, those are all welded in. I think Lizzie's gonna go up there and start drilling holes through the top or something. Is that the plan? Yep, we're gonna drill them down through. And this is gonna hold me, I'm not gonna knock it over. Through the, that's the holes you're gonna be drilling through right there. Okay. And there's one right here, you just can't see it. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to dig for it. That's where a blanket was. So we're gonna tack these nuts so they're permanent so that we can mount the seats without having to pull the cab. Okay, those bolts are gonna be hot, but they should all be able to come out now. There's a whole bunch of holes in the back of this cab. I don't know why, but there's a lot of extra holes drilled. We're just gonna take bolts and nuts and washers and we're gonna just plug them. No, Matt, no! Just do it right. We're fixing the kinked line. The old lines were CPE, fluorinated polyethylene. New lines are PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene. There'll be a quiz on that later. And then we assemble everything around it. Oh, this is the step you don't want to forget. That goes on first. Is there like a torque spec you think on these or like a little gap measurement tool to say, hey, stop tightening they it? Don't know they, bought, they, bought them out. they really, they're not supposed to bottom out, are they? Yeah. I'm feeling good about that. Okay. All right, the first fuel line in is put together there. We're gonna make a whole bunch more of these. They go together pretty smooth. We'll start plugging them in, stretching out the lines, seeing where we need to run it. Under the under the drive shaft or over? Over. Okay. Okay, can you reach in there and get that? Let's see how far my hand will fit under. Yeah, I got it. Okay, gently. Hang on, right there. Okay, tiniest bit. You're gonna be running on PV blaster when you start up. That's okay. <laughs> like you should be able to put that on with a child's yep, went on. strength. Here's a little known fact. You guys will see me in the distance with this green can of Mountain Dew and not even know that it's V8. I'm a big fan of V8. Ah, soupy. It's probably hard to steal from other people because nobody else drinks V8. Mm -hmm. I have to purchase these out of pocket. Right, I came out here and Tom had these lines basically done. 
So I'm going to look like the real star here and tighten up this last fitting. Okay. You ready to fire it up now? Oh, we've got to take this apart. We've got a modification here. So what's happening, this is the correct fitting, but it's sh too short. So it's hitting up here before it's hitting that inverted cone. Boom. Man, it is barely touching. So we're going to cut about a sixteenth of an inch off of that. We're going to do it without getting metal in the cooler because we're going to use a strategy. So what I'm thinking is we're going to cut on one side while we put air in the other side like this. And that will keep the metal shavings from going inside like that. Okay, Lizzie, come hold that one. I'll hold this one. Should just come right apart there, okay? Okay. Will you slather these up with anti seize? These bolts? Yeah. yeah Keyword, slather. Say it with me. Slather. I'm going to say, say it with me. Swather. Now I'm not too worried about these rusting in place, so why am I putting anti-seize in them? And the answer is, as a lubricant, as we take this in and out as we're working on it and in the future when we're maintaining it I'm missing a couple of them anyway this lubricates them so the threads don't wear out we need to talk about something that happened so a while back I handed Tom Tom some keys to four Jeeps we needed to go get and I said you're in charge of these and what did you say I said I will take care of these and make sure they get there something like that I'm guilty. Like a lot of people tried to defend me. No, it's not his fault. It was totally my fault. Because we asked you guys to come up with Tom's punishment, punishment. And the perfect punishment came through in the comments. I'm nervous because I don't know what it is. I yeah. read us some comments. This is from Tony and the Tones. Tom has to build a steel birdhouse with a grinder and a welder and no measuring implements <sighs> of any kind. And I'm going to add something to this because that doesn't matter if he can't measure it. I'm going to give him the dimensions that it needs to be. Oh. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you some blueprints, not to scale. And then you are going to build this. I have to build it with no measuring yeah. devices. No that? measuring devices. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm already laughing. <laughs> I'm already annoyed. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who Tony is, but if I ever find him, well, it sounds like he runs in a pack because it's Tony and the Tones. Uh, so I don't know how tough I'd start talking yeah, right now. I'm already outnumbered, huh? Yeah, I've never met a guy named Tony that didn't have some backup. <laughs> All right. Well, if I ever found him, I'd say, man, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. Can I use like a span? Can I use- You can figure <laughs> out which, yeah. Can, can I, what, I, like no measuring devices? No measuring devices. All right. <laughs> This is a good punishment. Peanut came to join me up here, and I do want to inform that I poured all, well, not all five gallons, four and a little bit, into the radiator without spilling a drop. Oh, Tom, come here. This is the basic frame design right here. So it's going to be four rack units high. It's going to be 21.86 centimeters deep it's going to be seven and a quarter inches wide and it's going to have a 712 pitch roof <laughs> do you know what, how what pitches are <laughs> yeah i know what like a roof, 712 roof pitch is okay okay but i don't know what have a rack unit is 
Can I you do don't? some internet searching? No. No, it's a unit of measurement. A rack unit. Yeah. Oh, and it needs to be done in under 12 parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this imaginary unit from Star Wars now comes into it. <laughs> it's a real unit. It's a unit of distance, not a unit of time. So using the speed of light, we'll convert that. All right. So one more thing. And I know that I can do this with Tom. We, a, we didn't set a realistic time on when this is done. But I trust Tom. We're gonna, he's going to use the honor system not to look up these measurements and not to sneak anything in. So we're just going to see how he does. I know he's a little confused on the rack units. It's cool because you're not going to accidentally find out what a rack unit is because no. you're like reading the ingredients in your cereal or something. Like no. we put in four rack units, which is the equivalent of a certain amount of inches of grain. Right, right. I won't stumble upon rack units in the next few parsecs. <laughs> yes. Punishing Tom is fun. It's going to be so fun to watch this. <laughs> you know, my favorite part is he has to cut all this out with a grinder. <laughs> That's, that's gonna be 90% of the work. Now, I, I assume there's gonna be some leeway, like if you need to bend something, you can bend it over your knee or over the table. Or um, I'm not gonna let you use the vice, though. No vice, huh? No, clamp, you, do I get any sort of mm -mm, clamp? No. They got, this this Tony, right. and the, Tony and the Tones was brutal. Two tools, yeah. grinder, welder. That's that was it. it. <laughs> Tony, come on, not a clamp, really? All right, this, this birdhouse is going to be awesome. Birds are going to love it. In our climate, we're going to have to park this birdhouse in permanent shade. Yeah, it's a chicken roaster sign. Now that his punishment has been dished out, nay, dolloped out. Metered out to some arbitrary units. We're using it in just as wrong of context as Harrison Ford did. All right, so the amount of time it took to meter out the punishment was the exact amount of time it needed to take for the day to be over. So everybody's going home and I've got some really sad news. Tom is going on vacation for how many days? Two. So you're not gonna see him for two days. It's all it's gonna fall on me and Lizzie here. That means he has time to, to He cheat. won't do it. I won't cheat. He won't do it. Okay. He won't do it. I've known I've known Tom since nineteen ninety four. I know Tom is as curious to see if he can do it right as we are <laughs> without measuring. Yeah. So he wants to measure it. He wants it to be precise, but he's also curious. How close could I get it without measurement? I, I know you're a little curious. I'm very curious. All it's right. going to be close. The rack units are awesome. <laughs> do not comment what rack units are because Tom does cruise the, the comments. And if you give him, if you give it, ah, don't give him that. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve that. We don't deserve that. <laughs> Hey. The birds don't deserve the ba Think of the baby birds that don't deserve that. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to say goodnight to this beast. We'll be back tomorrow just working away on it. Told you we'd be right back. We are working on the wrecker. We're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the banana and the Morver today. Not, not much, but a little bit. We don't have Tom Tom today. He's on his way. He's on some trip. I don't even know what he's doing on this trip, but he's going to be gone for two days. Matt said he didn't know what I was doing while I was gone for the next two days, so I thought I'd show you. Right now, I'm spending hours and hours and hours driving across Utah trying to get to Idaho. There's something different about you today. I took a shower. Oh, okay. Now I'm gassing up the truck at Maverick. All right, so these are the three cables right here that control all of my low range options and my four wheel drive options, front, rear. So this transfer case is a twin stick, meaning I can just shift the front or the rear independently of each other. And then the doubler is just a low range, approximately two to one, three to one, and five to one. I just stopped at Duluth Trading to grab some pants. Now I'm stopping in at Trader Joe's. We gotta figure out what, like, what gear that's in. Okay, there's one gear that way, one gear that way. So I think that's high range, low range. Okay, so that's as long as that needs to be right there. That's good to know. Is there something different about you? Haircut. Oh. Okay, that should just thread on there super nice, which it does. And we'll have, now if we had the lever on the other end of this, this would work. Yep. 
not strong enough. I haven't the grip to shift it, but that's how it works. Now we're crossing over into Idaho. I've got the transfer case in neutral right now. I've got this, I believe, in high range. So the box that these are going into, like I said, I don't have the lever for that, so I don't want to build it. So that's kind of as far as we can go right now. I don't know if it's a good habit or a bad habit, but I don't torque anything like anything down when you're doing this because it's coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. And if you torque it to spec every single time, it deforms just a little bit every time you do it. But you run the risk of thinking it's done and not checking them, and then you uh, drive down the road with loose, loose bolts, which I have done. Park low. One of the gears in between those two places. We made it all the way up to Idaho. We're here to celebrate my daughter Jessie's 19th birthday. She's not here with us right now, but we're all here to tell her Happy birthday, Jessie! Well, I think we did pretty good even without Tom here. Yeah, we got some stuff done. We got the banana and more of air up to date. They're ready to go. And we got some more lines in getting closer on the record. Yep. Yeah, we got the shift controls in. Transmission transfer case doubler, twin stick transfer case, and doubler. I got a question about that the other day, of how yeah. I did that J-turn with only the front wheels moving. Yeah. I'm like, it's a twin transfer case. They're like, I've never heard of that. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of confusion about transfer cases, because in some places, it seems like in like, like Europe and Australia, Having a center diff is really common, so they go from all-wheel drive to four-wheel drive by locking the center diff. Yeah. These transfer cases we have, there's not a single transfer case on this property that has a center diff. So, and then we get questions about locking hubs because they get confused with differential lockers and hub lockers and what those do. And it's pretty simple. A locker makes sure that both of your axles are spinning. The hubs is what interfaces between the drive axle and the hub. So if it's unlocked, you have no drive at the wheel. If you lock it, you have drive at the wheel, but it has nothing to do with traditional axle lockers. Mix them together, right? And you can drive a vehicle through some very gnarly stuff. Hopefully we can get it running and started. And we're back. That's right. We're going to be working on the heavy wrecker again today. I think uh, we're going to try to get it started. That's the end goal, and it's going to be awesome. Are you sure there's nothing different about you? Oh, I got a pedicure. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Let's see here. All right. We were working on all this yesterday. Today we're going to get these threaded up through the cab and see if this is even going to work. The conflict that we're having is the cables in the drive shaft. There should be plenty of room there. I'm thinking with the flexibility of the cables and our ability to move them out of the way, we're just gonna have to find some retention system that makes sense. And uh, that's what we're gonna be working on now. I wanna hear it run again. You see that hole where they come up through? The way these cables need to be lined up is the transmission needs to be on that side. Which one's the transmission? Uh, this one. Okay, so it, it would go around behind all of those and be on the other side. Okay, the rest of those three need to all be exactly the same length. Okay, and that's plenty of length in here, more than we need. Um, the transmission is probably about right. So I'm going to climb under there and just kind of see what we need under there. See how. All right, you can see that these cables are contacting the drive shaft, which is obviously a no-go. 
I'm going to need to get some kind of a hanger in here to hold these up here. That's not a problem. And then this one. All right. All right. This needs to be zip tied away from the headers. Oh, I got my collar up. Hey! Chad said that this will fire up. Now, since Chad said that, we uh, had the batteries hooked up and we were removing some stuff under the dash and we made sparks we did. So if it won't start, we might have a fuse to chase down. But we won't know that for a minute. I actually have some work to do before we start this thing. I've got to tighten up all these fittings. None of them are tight. We could drive this without brakes. Be terrifying. Okay, Lizzie, jump up in there because I'm going to need you to start steering the wheel left and right. All right, this is where we're, we start to fill that ram. You're pumping fluid into the ram and pumping air out of it. Okay, let's keep going faster. Oh, we're leaking somewhere. Hang on, we got a leak. Not tightened. All right. Man, this whole thing's not tightened. All right. We just got the last leaking fitting tightened up. Hopefully, there's not a next one. Okay. Back to gently, slowly turning. We gotta switch the hoses. The steering's backwards, so we've just gotta switch A and B here. That's okay, we can get it bled out even if they're backwards. Everything's all lubricated. <laughs> the headers are gonna smoke. Let me switch these two hoses so that we're turning the right way. Nice about hydraulics is if you get it wrong, you can just switch hoses. What's not nice about hydraulics is the incredible over the top mess it always makes. Okay, Lizzie, this should now, how far is that stop off of the end of the ram? Two inches, an inch? Okay, just keep turning to the right now, because everything's correct. Yeah, just go. Okay, let's hook the batteries up. Open the, how long do you want to open the garage door? Okay, Lizzie. There's the key. Put the on position, but not the start. We do have batteries. Okay. Let's call Chad. Hello? Hey. So, I've got no power. Turn, I got the... I don't know if I've hooked everything up I'm supposed to. I'm pretty sure I haven't. So there's, a, there's some kind of a breaker here on the firewall yep. that power is not going through. So go ahead and reset that breaker. Okay, let's see. Okay, we got power through that. Okay, okay. Lizzie, turn the key on and see if we can hear the pump. Nothing. So in this bundle that connects to the computer, there's another one that's not connected to anything. Does it, does it go? Yeah, there should be a 16 pin connector. Okay, turn that key off. Yeah, yeah that one definitely needs to be Okay, connected. now turn the key on. Okay, we've got everything the now. Has power. Okay, be ready to uh, turn that key off if this thing lurches. 
<laughs> we're, I'm 100% sure we're in park and I'm 100% sure the transfer case is in neutral. <laughs> but I'm still standing to the side. <laughs> if this thing was in low, low and idling, it will drive through that wall. Okay, fired up. I wonder what Matt's doing right now. I hope they don't start the record without me. I'm really excited to see it run for the first time. Start that header on fire. Man, it was like vibrating in the cab. It's probably a lot louder in there than out here. Okay, this, we can literally drive this right now. We can't stop it, but we can drive it. <laughs> we also can't reliably shift it. Yeah, pull the <laughs> shifter. Yeah, with some out. pliers. And... <laughs> hey Siri, call Tom Tom. Call somebody to answer the phone to save my life, it wouldn't be Tom. But this time he answered. <laughs> so, hey. So, yeah, no, 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 no. So, looks like we're not going to be able to get this started in the most epic fashion until you get back. Oh, okay. So. Just, uh, we wouldn't want you to miss it. Like, if we were to start it up and have it run beautifully and all four wheels steer at the same time and uh, just this epic I, thing, like, we wouldn't want you to miss that. I'd be sad to miss it, but I'd understand if you had to do it. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Because we did. We did it. Oh, you're kidding me. No, you said you would understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Why did you guys do that? <laughs> no, it, it's, uh, yeah. We could drive it right now. Is it running? Yeah, there's no brakes, but we could drive it. All right. That is exciting. I know we've had it running before. But now I know that I, it's steering. It's steering on both ends. It's awesome. It was it's so fun to turn the key and just hear it roar in front of me. <laughs> right. Start, <laughs> starting with a key. Mm. I think we've got all the leaks stopped. We've just got a. We've just got a couple things. We're still waiting on parts. I know. I know that's a huge like turn off to some of you. They're waiting on parts. Oh, great! Another video about how they're waiting for parts. Well, we're waiting for parts. So we're just going to keep chiseling away at this and working on stuff that we can do. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm going to eat me some chocolate.